This is Cybert signing into Coastline Chaos in Tiberium Wars, and we have YT600 full. I don't even remember what his name actually is, but he is going to be 600 full. His ally is going to be Simply, who is the Cyan Nod, so hands down to that guy for actually getting a name that makes a little bit of sense. We do have Hitman47 full. He is going to be as the Red Skrin. And then as the pink GDI going crane first, we have Chaos. And this is from the Just For Fun 2v2 Finals. It is going to be a best of five series. And of course, since it is going to be just plain old Tiberium Wars, we are going to be seeing an absolute ton of units. And I would be very surprised if this series ended up being all in one video. So there probably will be two parts. We do have the dual refinery from it looks like the right side team because uh, the left side team actually may not have gone crane first no they did not indeed which means that if they're able to put out some serious firepower in the next say one minute then they could be at a huge advantage but then after that the income of the team right side from going for the dual refinery openers will of course start to kick in and then they'll have such huge armies that they may end up dominating the battlefield but it really will be coming down to which one of these teams can be able to better counter their opponents so we could be seeing a lot of orcas we do have two gdi players and then uh, hitman actually going to be playing random drawing screen so we've got full representation between our four players and of course coastline chaos is kind of an unusual map just because there's two tiberium spikes and then also there isn't really a there isn't really a third for for either player for any one of the players just because there's one third for each team and you know, it is a pretty big third field but third what am i even talking about natural field but it is you know pretty big field but you do have to share it with your ally and often players do just go ahead and base creep like we are seeing from simply there and uh looks like 600 full is going for the subway capture which i mean sometimes that can be useful but i don't think that i've ever actually seen it be used all of that much in games players just tend to go ahead and try to snipe it down so that their opponents can't do anything sneaky with it and uh, the foundry going to be getting sniped down so hitman going to be losing half of his building queue of course that won't affect his defenses but he will be losing that which is kind of annoying for him however we're granted your squad going to be trying to pick off that buggy and now harvesters will be getting sniped down so already 600 full going to be making some strikes out against his opponent no actually is that going to be simply yeah it's actually simply's bikes who are going to be the ones doing that sort of damage 600 full look like he was going for some sort of engineer cap didn't actually end up working out for him but i mean hitman is like hey if you want to kill my harvesters i'm totally fine with that it looks like he's not really going to be pulling his harvesters too far he's mostly just letting them get taken out he has yet to actually build any real attacking units he has yet to even throw down a photon cannon however we do now have disintegrators out on the field. They should be able to at least chase the bikes away, if not completely destroy those bikes. But what is 600 full going to be doing with simply, it looks like Predator tanks and Scorpion tanks for the win. And oh, the APC going to be getting sniped down. These pit bulls intercepting at just the right time. This engineer is definitely going to be going down as long as Chaos does pursue at least a little bit. The engineer does go ahead and pop out, which is pretty good for him. He might actually get focused down eventually but those bikes were cleaned up only losing one harvester definitely doesn't need three refineries when he's only got three harvesters could really sell one if not two of those refineries off unless he's planning on adding on more harvesters scorpion tanks from simply could be pushing forward here if they're able to swing around they might be able to snipe down this economy of course smashing the big the big shared field economy is going to be a huge part of this game if you're able to smash that down and deny your opponent however it does look like 600 full was able to grab that tiberium spike so i guess he was able to make use of that subway system otherwise he would have had to run that engineer or possibly fly that engineer over there firehawks on the field not a big surprise that it's going to be the tier 3 tech up from our gdi player and i'm actually kind of surprised that we haven't seen a whole lot of air power just yet as of course orcas can be used to snipe down the harvesters on that close field pretty easily and especially right here because then you can run this way you can hit this spike if your opponent has it and then just run over here and this this breakup of terrain with the water and the bridge makes it difficult for any ground targets to give chase to your aircraft but i mean of course if you get a if you get an air pad over here then you can always fly and hit tech or production that may, it may be in your opponent's main however it doesn't look like we're going to be seeing too much of that from these players Predator tanks, Scorpion tanks backed up by Juggernaut's going to be a very powerful combination. 
However, this is going to be just a tank spammy game, and we're probably going to be seeing a couple of big battles, and then the game will be decided. And currently, if we see armies being split up like this and Seeker tanks on the field, they will be able to absorb a number of shots from these tanks, but they won't really be doing too much other than that. Simply could actually be losing some tanks, going to be reverse moving into his opponent, and refineries getting thrown down, which these can just help to... The refiners that are just out of place over here can just help to shield their the units for a little bit if the if the players decide to try to target down the actual refineries instead of going for the units. Corruptor is going to be healing up those dev tanks. However, oh, a couple of seekers could be taking a lot of damage to the rear armor from the scorpion tanks if they're able to swing around the side. It doesn't even matter because juggernauts bombarding from afar will be able to clean up that seeker without too much trouble unless they decide to stop firing. However, devour tanks are going to be charged with Tiberium. And if they will just do a bit more damage, going to be able to snipe down these tanks one by one. And suddenly, Chaos is actually sounding the full retreat. He could just be pulling back behind the buildings. And the Avatar is going to be getting eaten up, going for just a single Juggernaut, trading it with possibly a couple of Avatars. Although, no, simply controlling pretty well, able to stay out of the shots of, that, of the Juggernauts relatively well. Hasn't lost a single Avatar. Orc is going to be coming in and someone beaconed for whatever reason, possibly trying to set up a trap. However, oh, Dev Tank's going to be catching a Juggernaut, so a nice hit there for Hitman. Is he going to be able to press on forward and take down some of the production or tech of 600-fold? That would be a huge, huge hit, but we've got this giant mass of Juggernauts, and it could actually end up paying off in a big, big way for our Nod player, unless he just sits back and gets taken out from a distance. But if he's able to get up close and personal, he could do some huge damage. Although, no, it looks like he's mostly just sending in a couple of avatars at a time. Going to be losing those relatively easily to the Juggernaut masses and the Orca strikes that are coming in. And, of course, the Devastator warships floating around don't hurt either. So, uh, Hitman and Hitman and Chaos going to be in a pretty good position. We'll have to see. Are they going to be able to maintain their lead and continue putting on the pressure? Or is 600 full and simply going to be able to start hitting back and taking some names. A couple of Corruptors could be getting taken out here. The Tripod went down as well. The Avatar is going to be getting pulled back. And uh, the Devastator Warships are going to be utilized to help break the front of 600 full. And simply, that is really what it's going to be coming down to. Is this artillery? Which one of these? Oh, Tib Vapor Bomb is not going to be happening because it's instead just going to be some mines. However, they could be getting eliminated relatively easily. Sonic Emitter on the front line. However, Firehawks just went and bombed something not entirely sure what that was unless yeah they're no though those are grain firehawks those are indeed 600 full firehawks so he hasn't been able to do a huge amount of damage with them as far as i know the mcv does still stand over the devastator warship currently sitting around not doing a or not getting taken out or anything there's no there's no firehawks with missiles so it's going to be going for the mcv of 600 full wild corruptors are going to be getting taken out as well and there actually might not be enough to stop the Avatar Juggernaut army from pounding down this base. The, ba the barracks actually getting taken out helped those harvesters to bring in more income for Chaos. So he's going to be happy about that. However, the Sonic Emitter getting some pretty good shots off the Juggernauts as well. Going to be able to do a huge amount of damage. However, harvesters are just wandering all over the place. There's not a whole lot of Tiberium left for Hitman and Chaos. They've been able to maintain a huge economic lead for this game, and now suddenly they don't have a whole lot going on. Somehow this Devourer tank is still alive. Not exactly sure how that ended up working, but these disintegrators over here are going to be just chilling out, not really doing a whole lot, and this Harvester is, I'm assuming, going to get shot down, but no, it'll just escape. So I guess uh, simply in 600 full are like, no, no, you can, you can take our Tiberium. We're totally fine with that if you just want to go ahead and harvest our Tiberium for us. Oh, man, the Juggernaut's getting focus fired down. However, this splitting of bombs is pretty good, but it's not quite perfect. One Orca does go down. Trading one Orca for one Juggernaut is going to be all right. But, oh, the stasis field activates at just the right time, meaning these Juggernauts are going to be completely locked down if there's an actual attack moving out. Firehawks are going to be heading out across the map and going for a huge bombing run. However, they could be defending Firehawks with missiles. They could be able to snipe down a couple of these Firehawks to go down immediately. And suddenly, 600 full only has enough bombs to take out one airfield. Did do some damage, and Stratofighter being utilized to get on out of there. However, we do have a buggy going to be able to snipe down, possibly, this Harvester after taking that down that Devastator warship. So a nice veterancy there for, six, for uh, 
simply getting that from able to kill that Devastator Warship. We don't have a second Devastator Warship, at least not just yet. However, Orca's going to be coming in. Stealth Tanks will make quick work of them. They weren't able to actually snipe down that fully heroic... Oh, they weren't able to snipe down anything. They got, I think, one bike or one buggy, but they didn't get the heroic buggy, and they didn't even get the stealth tank, which means the stealth tank could actually be doing a lot of damage. It will be going for the refiner, revealing the stealth and the pressure from the juggernauts coming in. There's going to be the scan, but it's only one juggernaut goes down. Only one stealth tank, rather. However, Firehawk's going to be exchanging relatively well from 600 full, and now the juggernauts from 600 are going to be rushing in here and doing huge amounts of damage. Simply isn't even attacking with his avatars. He simply doesn't feel the need to. The War Factory getting targeted down in just a not enough units for Hitman and Chaos, they suddenly do not have anything. What did they even spend their money on this game? It seems like they had a huge amount of Tiberium harvested, but not a huge amount of units. Lightning Spike getting thrown down right on the front line next to these Juggernauts, but as you can see, they're mostly in high health, and with Firehawks going to be able to continually bombard and then just retreat. This is actually not looking too bad for Team Left Side, 600 pull and simply couple of sell-off buildings. There were no crushing buildings there. They're actually not being sold off at all. They're just simply being destroyed. Disintegrators being pulled down from the north, but not a whole lot of units on the field for Hitman or Chaos. This could very well be it. Bloodhounds being called in. You might as well if you've got the cash. Could actually be sniping down one of those ox transports. No, everyone will arrive safely, which means even more firepower on the front line. And the Rocket Troopers going to be trying to snipe down these APCs, but hey, you know what? You're going to be losing Rocket Troopers while these Juggernauts are doing damage to actual refineries and production. So if you're sniping down APCs, that is not the best thing that you could be doing. Of course, these Juggernauts, if they all go down somehow, Hitman and Chaos might be able to hold on. However, the Disintegrate is going to be able to overwhelm the Bloodhounds, take out both of the Pitbulls in a couple of seconds, I'm assuming. And then the Juggernauts are all completely explode, exposed. However... Dis however, just crushing the disintegrators may actually be a better choice. One juggernaut does go down. However, so many buggies rocking up from simply. He's going to be able to eliminate all of these disintegrators. Good moves there. And it's actually going to be a stealth tank, not even utilizing those firehawks. No need to. And at this point, it really is pretty much it. There's the sell-off from Chaos, and he will most likely be leaving the game in a couple of seconds. Chaos has been defeated, leaving it just to Hitman and his disintegrator squads. Which, I mean, he has not been doing a pretty good job of being a hitman in this game. He's just been getting hit a lot. One Harvester does still remain just chilling there. But ultimately, this bank, this game is over. Game 1 will be going to 600 full. And simply, it's going to have to be an absolute miracle for Hitman to take this game by himself. He's got a lot. Of, he's got, well, he had a bunch of screen infantry units. But at this point, with how many buggies are on the field... He doesn't have a whole lot of infantry and bombing a barracks with Firehawks because, you know, you might as well just overkill the crap out of that barracks. The power plant as well. Hitman is like, no, no, man, I have a refiner. I'm still in this game. Hitman has been defeated. Game one going to 600 full and simply neither one of these players really wanting to uh, do a whole lot of attacking in the early game. There wasn't a whole lot of aggression. And it really did just come down to a big, slow push from the left side. But, I mean, for a little while there, it seemed like the artillery from Hitman was doing a fair amount of damage, able to snipe down or nearly snipe down the MCV of 600 full. So, ultimately, game number one was decided, though. And as you can see in the resources graph, 600 full going to be on the bottom there simply. But Hitman and Chaos doing better in the eco. Overall, I'm curious to see which team was able to, to gather more resources only by about 10,000 credits. Oh, no, that's average income. My mistake. Why do I always do that? But in total, about 13,000 credits, which still is not very impressive over the course of a 13-minute game split between two players on each team. 13,000 credits is almost nothing. It really only bakes down to about 500 credits per minute per player, which is not a big difference at all. So overall, the economic game ended up going more too simply than uh, 600 full. He was able to pump out a lot of avatars as a result, but the Juggernaut's really backing him up on that one. Game number two is going to be coming right up. Ooh, and we are on downtown Dust Bowl, and we do indeed have Simply. He's going to be, once again, as that orange nod. He's in the left side. His ally is going to be YT Chissy, 600 full. And, of course, in the south, we do have Chaos, once again, as the GDI, but he's playing red this time. And then, once again, playing as random, drawing Nod, we do have Hitman. He is going to be the blue Nod. 
No crane opener, at least not yet. Well, I mean, it's not a crane opener at all for our team right side, which unlike last game where they did go for that crane opener, and it ended up not really working out for them. And of course, oh man, you still get those militant squads. I always forget that in uh, Tiberium Wars, you can actually sell off the sell off the Tiberium silos and get a scouting squad, whereas in Kane's Wrath, you cannot. And I always forget that in uh, Tiberium Wars, you can do that. And of course, we do have War Factories out of, I'm assuming, all of these players. Although it is a little bit behind for some of them. And then a couple of more scouting squads going to be drafted as well. No, Not a big surprise there. We may actually be seeing an Engineer cap of some sort. It would be kind of crazy if he decided to go for the uh, EMP in the middle. But considering he only built one Engineer, kind of odd. Usually two Engineers is a better choice because then you can be going for two different targets at once. And your opponent is going to be having a hard time of either trying to sell off and move their MCV or trying to sell off all of their buildings or throw down stuff. So uh, we could actually be seeing the AMB get captured, but that would be a little bit unusual, just doesn't happen very much. Bikes going to be out for simply, they're out running around or on the field, could actually be going in for some of these harvester snipes. We see four harvesters immediately out of chaos, so he's going to get his economic game underway. And actually this Harvester, I'm not sure if it's just a bugged out a little bit. He is going to be going directly for Hitman. So Hitman already under attack. However, his bike is not going to be the focus of attack. Yes, it is. We do have a, min a minor amount of micro from simply making sure that he's focusing down the bikes of his opponents, which is always going to be good. And of course, on this map, you do have a little bit more Tiberium than the previous match, which means that you can decide to expand towards your opponent or backwards away from your opponent. But... Lots of Foxhole going to be utilized in this game, possibly, which is always, of course, very fun to see. We do have an Engineer Cap going to be going down, but it already grabbed a Power Plant. Never mind, that's not a wrong Power Plant. It was a wrong team indeed. However, will he be selling off the War Factory? He did force the sell off of the War Factory. That was a late reaction, at least a little bit there. And I'm not sure if the Engineer actually did anything for 600 full. I'm assuming not. However, it's going to be the MCV Packup. So this, this attack isn't doing a huge amount, this Engineer grab. It's not doing a huge amount of direct damage. He wasn't actually able to grab anything, but he's forced to sell off of that War Factory. And the Engineer doesn't get the Operation Center, but he does force the sell off. So simply having to move his MCV, sell off his War Factory, draft a Shredder turret, and suddenly the map just explodes with scouting squads going all over the place. And it looks like a bike did go down or maybe a buggy went down instead. The MCV getting packed up for 600 volt. It looks like he is going to be going for that aggressive expansion. The engineer going to be hopping into that APC. And we could be seeing another attempt to try to capture one of his opponent's buildings, which always is a ton of fun and always something that you have to watch out for in team games. Team games tend to be a little bit more cheesy than just straight up 1v1. And as a result, Engineer caps are a little bit more common. We'll have to see if that's actually going to be playing a part in this game. As we did see some attempts, but they didn't work out very well due to some good focus firings from Simply and 600 full. However, we have a number of rockets here. They're going to be going for those APCs, which is, of course, a good idea. Eliminating, oh, nice moves there on those rocket troopers. However, the Predator tank is going to be heading right in. And a second Predator tank going to be picking up the crushes on all of those rocket troopers. There are enough rocket troopers to hold this attack off as there aren't really that many Predator tanks, but they should still be able to do a fair amount of damage. Rifleman squad's going to be added on as well as we drop a couple of frames here and there. However, these Predator tanks, of course, going to be very happy about dealing with the Rifleman squad's not as happy about dealing with the Rocket Troopers. This attack getting pushed back, that APC was able to escape. However, will it be able to do a whole lot else? I'm not entirely sure. The right man spam is moving out, but is this an actually good idea? I'm not entirely sure that there's enough man spam here to destroy 600 full. He's going to be having shredder turrets and watchtowers being dropped down in his face. Oh, we do have actually two engineers, so maybe that other engineer was just added on, or it could be the engineer from earlier in the game. The crane could be forced to sell off. However, where's that other APC going? It's going for the MCV of Hitman. So 600 full going to be going for the crane. Will he grab it? He does indeed grab it. Sells it off immediately. Only 750 credits. However, this, the MCV, is going to be the target. Oh, he gets it. 600 sells it off immediately. He grabs the engineer back up inside of that APC. Great moves by 600 full. A huge amount of damage done. However, he He's taken a fair amount of damage to his own MCV. These rocket troopers video doing a huge amount of damage. Not a whole lot of watch showers, not a whole lot of Schroeder troops, and the refinery cap with that harvester as well, forcing the sell off of some of the buildings. Needs to just go ahead and sell off that refinery. 
just to make sure that he's doing as much damage as possible. Still no watchtowers are just now being drafted, but no shredder turrets from Simply. He's got his own problems to deal with, dropping down obelisks all over the place, trying to deal with Chaos's incoming predator tank. Chaos losing one harvester there, and that engineer cab did a fair amount of damage but is it enough to actually stop the team on the right side chaos and hitman hitman going to be able to push forward while chaos is actually going to be pulling back in the south we do have a couple of veteran rocket troopers here and a couple of heroic ones as well although good focus firing from 600 pull he's going to be able to snipe down a couple of those veteran squads and it looked like we do have the reinforcements that got called in however now with a second watchtower being dropped down and with, oh, no, War Factory, the War Factory being sold off, uh, destroyed, or captured, one of those three, although I don't think it was actually captured. Once again, another fully heroic missile squad being got here, or being promoted on the battlefield, but with no War Factory, this is going to be absolutely very tough for Hitman. It's mostly going to be coming down to Chaos, if Chaos can smash simply, which is not going to be any easy feat, considering the MCV constantly being able to queue up those obelisks are going to be doing very well against this low tier army predator tanks they're in pretty good numbers and with the support of the rocket troopers they will be definitely be able to do a solid amount of damage but will they be able to do enough it looks like he's going to be pulling around the side he could be going for the mcv and trying to strike at the back instead of striking where his opponent is strongest however it looks like his stealth tanks have gotten wind of this attack and they may actually be spotted here yeah one stealth tank going to be taking some damage here which is just going to be a little bit of a warning there to hitman hitman is going to be able to hold off here albeit barely the apc is rushing in but there's not a whole lot there, although no, with this many rifleman squads from our GDI player, 600 full is going to be able to push on through here. It looks like there isn't nearly enough Milton squads, however, with the harvesters crushing absolutely everything on the front lines, 600 full may be forced to retreat. Oh, the Pitbull's going to be coming in here. They're going to be able to snipe down both the APC and the Engineer and that Stealth Tank as well. However, the Pitbull's going to be taking some light losses. Not too big of a deal when you're sniping down that, much, that, that many resources worth of credits from your opponents. It does look like this chaos was able to send all of his units pretty much his entire army into the back of his opponent's base going to be able to snipe down two refineries but he wasn't able to claim the mcv or any of the power which means that still tons of production are on the field for simply he could be losing a couple of more uh a harvesters there he doesn't want to protect them apparently leaving his leaving his avatar up north and a couple of rocket troopers could be getting taken out the fully heroic one will still be standing However, good moves here by Chaos, trying to do as much damage as he can. Is it actually going to be enough? He could actually be crushing 600 full while Hitman is pressuring the front. He's going to be going for the back. As you can see, the Harvesters, are they bugging out a little bit, or are they just forgetting to be told to do anything? As the Harvesters getting focused down bit by bit, these Rocket Troopers able to do a huge amount of damage. The dual MCVs could be getting crushed down. 600 full could be getting forced out of this game. Tons of Rocket Troopers on the front, and suddenly Chaos is doing absolutely great, despite losing his crane which wasn't that big of a setback however so he could be doing huge amounts of damage is going to be sm smashing down the economy he may not be able to go for the mcvs he may be forced to sound the retreat but he's done a fair amount of damage slowing down the economy on the front lines for 600 full who is not going to be able to do as much harvesting as he would have liked and yeah denying these expansions is absolutely huge simply could be getting smashed out of this game. We got pit bulls in mass rolling up, sniping down harvesters. You got to hand it to Chaos. He's been sniping down harvesters all game long. And now he's gone so far around the map with his army that he's actually back ready to defend his buddy Hitman, who's been doing a good job holding on with just the man spam. And we simply do not have any sniper teams. It's like count trying to counter man spam with rockets, which is just not the best idea ever. Avatar on the front line crushing down some of those rocket troopers shredder turrets as well doing a fair amount of damage finishing up the rest of those units and the line up from these two players we could be seeing a big push from uh, Hitman and Chaos together they might be actually joining forces there's still a ton of predator tanks here however they may actually be blocking those harvesters a little bit needs to possibly reorganize his army however without any sort of oh Pipple's actually going to be on the counter attack getting some damage off and pulling much of the army from 600 full or actually no that is going to be simply's army that's getting pulled back 
So 600 full is dealing with the pressure on the front. The Predator tank's now going to be moving in, and they could even just see if they can swing around and go for the MCB to support the Pitbulls. However, the Pitbulls going to be getting pulled back. They can't really deal directly with Avatars. That's just not a good move. However, huge amounts of damage from Chaos and Hitman. Can 600 full and simply even hold on in this game? Simply still got a full base of production, and one of these MCVs could possibly be able to escape, although one of the MCVs may have actually been sniped down when I wasn't looking. But at least this base will be getting smashed down 600 and, and uh, simply getting forced out of this top right side and basically forced out of the top side of the map entirely because there goes simply he's out of the game. However, KI 600 full has now got control of all of his units. He's going to see if he can do a little bit better than simply was able to. And once again, that big push from the south, although the stealth does claim a huge number of those rocket troopers, there's not a whole lot of anti-infantry here. It's just going to be avatars, which will be able to do some crushing, but ultimately the splits from uh, from Chaos is just going to be too good, and I'm guessing that game did end up going to Hitman and Chaos, just completely ending right there in possibly some sort of a desync, but overall, I think Hitman and Chaos were able to take game number two, which means that game number three may very well be coming up. Well, it will definitely be coming up, but probably in part two, which I actually lied about, and I will explain all of that in just a moment, but... Spawning as the pink knot in the top left side, we do have Hitman. Oh my gosh, I need to get that under control. And going to be as the yellow knot on the left side, we do indeed have Chaos. He's going to be playing as that knot, going for that crane first. And as the team in the south side, we have 600 full once again. Going to be as the nod, well just now playing as nod, but simply is going to be as the scrin. So we've got once again another action pack match guaranteed because... This is a Red Zone Rampage. We've got Blue Tiberium and, of course, Crane first, followed up by Dual Refinery. I would be surprised if um, any one of our players did not do this. However, the only thing that I would not be surprised by is if, instead of doing that, they went, by a ch they went for a Super Cheese, which wouldn't be the most uncommon thing. However, this match is going to be most likely absolutely crazy. And we do have Early Scouting Squads going to be getting sniped down, which everyone knows is super important in team games because there's just so much variety and already with four harvesters, two refineries on that blue field. Pretty standard there. And then, of course, players tend to just sort of base creep towards each other and then go for huge amounts of artillery, and this map just becomes one giant, unseeable pile of dead units, and uh, no one can really tell what's going on. However, we do have simply going to be adding on his Warp Sphere. All of these players going to be going... Actually, no, it does look like the Dual War Factory is going to be a little bit delayed for 600 full. However, it is going to be seen immediately by Hitman, who's going to be going out with a strike force on some of those harvesters. We'll have to see, is he able to do a huge amount of damage? Because he is going to be getting his base creep going on, and typically, players will base creep in both directions since they do have a crane pretty early on. Because, I mean, not going for crane on this map is actually, in a lot of ways, a really bad idea just because of how much Blue Tiberium there is and you want to be able to harvest that blue tiberium as quickly as possible, and then it just makes base creeping so much easier if you're able to throw down two structures at once and base creep towards your opponent. However, it looks like 600 full and simply going to be massing up Seekers and Scorpion tanks. Their opponent's doing a likely the exact same thing, but just with Scorpion tanks, sounds as it is going to be not a V, not over. Seeker tanks are going to be heading right in. This may actually be a bad idea because there's not really enough Seeker tanks to contend this many Scorpion tanks simply going to be forced to pull back over attack bikes, going to be getting rushed in. And yeah, you don't want to be really going for the production structures or units at this point. You want to be sniping down as many harvesters as you can because there's just going to be so many units on the field that going for harvesters is what is going to be hurting your opponents the most unless you're able to smash down a huge number of units. But an attack force of a couple of bikes is not going to be that potent. However, oh, pulling back all of his scorpion tanks because there's one lightning spike. I don't know if I agree with that at all. However, with this many scorpion, this, this many seeker tanks, I don't know that it'll be that big of a deal. It's not like a war factory is going to be getting one shot or anything like that. However, on the left side, one more Scorpion tank may very well be going down. Gets sniped right there. However, Harvester's getting taken out is the big, big deal. On the left side, only one going down. Not a huge deal. However, 600 full with this many bikes. Oh, actually running into the Scorpion tanks. A huge mistake. He's got enough bikes to contend the Scorpion tanks. But overall, taking a huge amount of damage. Losing bike after bike after bike. And he took down a single Harvester. I don't think that was effective at all. 
he was able to take down a couple of Scorpion tanks, but ultimately only taking out one Harvester. Probably not going to be winning the game. However, Devour tanks at the front going to be able to... Oh, the Seeker tanks tanking the damage while the Devour tanks are actually the ones doing damage. Absolutely great moves here by Simply, but he is going to be forced to pull back. However, that Corruptor is actually going to be healing up the wrong one. And uh, just simply not enough Corruptors. There is going to be a Storm Column thrown down on the front line, which means these Scorpion tanks are going to be getting forced back and back and back. Even the attack bugs not going to be enough. However, Scorpion tanks are going to be staring each other down. They're going to be shooting each other with their eye beams because from that distance, their cannons just won't do so. They'll be squinting at each other saying, you move first. No, you move first. I don't want to move first. You move first. Oh, one Scorpion tank going to be getting mugged out a little bit there and actually totally owned. However, more bikes rushing in from the flank and bikes can be very, very dangerous because you might be thinking, well, they're not going to be doing a huge amount of damage, but if you're able to get a flank and your opponent isn't paying attention, you can get up two or three rounds of shots. The face field getting thrown down at just the last moment there as that Harvester does survive. However, now 600 pull is going to be getting the damage dealt to him right on his Harvester's He's taking that right in the Harvester. However, all of the bikes are going down. My gosh, did he only snipe down one single Harvester with that many bikes? Again, not probably a game-breaking move. Scorpion Dex is going to be getting stacked up a little bit too poorly, which means that the splash damage actually not doing a huge amount of splash damage there. It does look like Hitman is going to be forced to back there. However, this one single avatar may actually be overwhelmed. No, the Scorpion tanks are like, we don't feel comfortable in this situation. More bikes are rushing in, but again, these bike attacks, they're, semi they're seemingly going to be very, very powerful. And then they end up only sniping down like a single harvester, much like this attack before Chaos is totally shutting it down like a boss just moving all of his scorpion tanks and of course the bad thing about moving all of your scorpion tanks is oh suddenly you have nothing to, to defend your actual production structures and once this thing goes down one more factory goes down the second one will still remain but again once you lose both of your war factories this could be a very dire situation However, he is going to be blocking it a little bit. He doesn't actually have enough money to be constantly producing units, which means these two avatars may actually be going down when they are forced to face off against these scorpion tanks. But if they're able to do enough damage to the scorpion tanks, Chaos is going to have a hard time actually replacing that army. He hasn't been able to really harvest as much of this green field as he would like. And, oh, yeah, this is going to be feeling really, really good for uh, Simply. He's going to be really happy about doing that. However, ooh... Could be swinging on through, and we'll have to see. This uh, The Storm Column was just then sold off. Does he have a second one queued? No, he does not, which means the Scorpion Tanks could be doing huge amounts of damage. However, they, go, they are going to be reverse moving into an Obelisk, and another Avatar going to be popping up. And by Avatar, of course, do mean Tripod. It's not actually going to be able to EMP any of these Scorpion Tanks. They're all going to be getting taken out. However, there's no pressure on the front, which means this attack is just going to be sort of thwarted, and then not a whole lot will actually be coming from that attack. That one single Scorpion Tank got EMP'd. Not that big of a deal, but the Obelisk and the Storm Column able to do a huge amount of damage. Those avatars, those tripods going to be doing a fair amount of damage as well. However, the big attack going to be coming in from Hitman. Is he going to be able to take down the Obelisk before it comes back up? It's in that low power state, but the Operation Center did get sold off, which means a Black Hand Squad on the front line is going to be extremely powerful. The Scorpion Tanks are going to be swinging around the side of Storm Column, getting thrown down to block them off, and these rocket, these uh, Black Hand Squads are going to be somewhat powerful, but not when they get completely run over by the Scorpion Tanks. On the front line, the Rocket Trooper is going to be constantly putting on pressure, but over on the right side, Simply is making some pretty solid progress, and now they're actually our avatars on the field, from 600 full, going to be doing a huge amount of damage, smashing down the open front of Chaos. Chaos has suddenly got a lot of Chaos in his base. However, it does look like Hitman going to be going for the power plants. Not a bad move, but ultimately, the Harvesters are what you want to be going for, and it's not a huge deal because there's no base defenses hitting him right now. The Sonic Commander, or rather the Storm Column from Simply, going to be there to defend in the... Oh! EMP in the conyard, adding insult to injury, simply smashing down that conyard in combination with the, the avatars of 600 full, and this could be the end of this game in just a couple of moments if these avatars and tripods are able to do enough damage. However, the avatars are actually going to be pulling back, and with this many rocket troopers, are they going to be enough to actually stop this damage output from simply... He does have gunwalkers on the front line. One of them gets taken out immediately. The other, the others may get focused down relatively quickly, but the avatars are going to be not on the front line. They're instead going to be the tripods on the front line dealing with these power plants, dealing with also the tech and the production structures of Chaos. He is going to be taking a huge amount of damage while on the left side we do have avatars and going to be a black hand squad moving in as well just to help deal with any sort of infantry pestering that is going to be affecting those avatars. Gunwalkers once again eating up the majority of those 
rocket squads and that is just no good for chaos he has simply been almost completely forced out of this match and hitman is being pressured from the more front as well he's got no scorpion tanks he's got no attack bikes to deal with the avatars on his doorstep knocking his door down crushing all of his infantry and he doesn't even have time to hide them because they're just getting completely smashed. Pressured from two fronts, Hitman is basically out of this game, as is Chaos. Game number three will likely be going to 600 full and simply as Chaos has been defeated and he didn't have a whole lot left on the field. And now Hitman is like, no, no, I got this, I totally got this. I'm going to be able to produce enough infantry to stop this attack and then stop the follow-up attacks as well. I'm totally confident in my abilities. And sometimes maybe you're just a little bit overconfident, but Hitman likely typing some stuff in the chat. He's like, hey, good game, guys. We are going to be passing out of this game. And uh, of course, this means that the point lead will be taken by 600 full and simply they'll be able to take this game and also be taking this tournament as Chaos and Hitman could not finish out this best of five series. 600 full and simply are going to be taking it as Hitman has been defeated right there. So they're technically, we've only seen three games and technically they're only one point lead. Of course, two points to one for 600 full and simply. But ultimately, they did end up taking the series. Hitman could not continue on. He had to, I'm assuming, go and do something. I'm not exactly sure what happened. But uh, Chaos wasn't able to finish out the tournament with his buddy Hitman, which means that 600 full and simply did win this I guess best of three series which I mean it's kind of odd to have finals as best of three but overall in a 10 minute game we do have about a total of 50,000 credits of difference or maybe only about 40 something thousand credits 44,000 credits of difference split between two players over the course of 10 minutes that is a minor difference not a huge huge difference but as you can see simply really pulling ahead in those last couple of minutes where they had pretty much already already won the game there was a lot of really nice back and forth there with the attack bikes but ultimately it was like man here comes 10 attack bikes oh they sniped down one harvester and did almost nothing else and once again, a lot of Harvesters did survive in this game. Not really all that uncommon on Red Zone Rampage. You don't see a huge amount of harassment when you've got the blue field tucked up against the edge of the map like that. There's not a whole lot of opportunity to harass. But that is beside the point, as congratulations to 600 Full and Simply for taking this series and this tournament. Big congrats to them, and of course Hitman and Chaos making it to the finals and taking the number two spot. But we'll have to see more Tiberium Wars action in the future, but we are going to be getting back to Red Alert 3 and Kane's Wrath. we got a lot of action coming from those two places as well, and it's going to be Cybert signing out.